day of every year, BBC Radio Kent paints a picture of life in the county. And as the county awakes to another day, there's already a building that's buzzing with activity. Six point seven in the west, one hundred four point two in the east. From the Thames to the Channel, Radio Kent from the BBC. Good morning. It's exactly five thirty. Welcome to BBC Radio Kent with Carly Simon. Nobody does it better. Six o'clock is the first bulletin of the day. A chance to catch up on the night's news and the day's breaking stories. BBC News for Kent, it's five past six. From the Thames to the Channel. Radio Kent, from the BBC. Good morning, welcome to The Breakfast Show with me, John Warnett. It's Wednesday the 16th of September 1998 and we're going to kick off this morning with Air Supply. Good morning to you. BBC Radio Kent's flagship programme, The Breakfast Show, hosted by John Warnett. What uniquely we have is that we have a Kent outlook. We don't have a, a Canterbury or a Dover or a Medway or a Tunbridge Wells. We look at the county as a whole, and there are things that go on in Kent which are in, just as important to people in Tunbridge Wells as they are on the Isle of Sheppey. And that's what we uniquely have that other stations don't. Because it would disturb the animals. As a BBC local radio station, more than anything else, it's our job to provide a news service that's accurate and impartial. We have reporters based in Tunbridge, Maidstone, Dover, Thanet and Canterbury. They allow us to provide a local news service that's unrivaled in the county. But Thomas, you, you have to accept that uh, animal rights... The phone-in part of The Breakfast Show is very popular and gives you the chance to air your views. Some of them have uh, broken in. No, I do not accept that... I love talking to people. I'm very gregarious. And I honestly don't think about the fact that I'm on the radio. I, I'm just here talking to people and they're my friends and we have... A, we yeah, have a few harsh words occasionally, but we get on well and, and I hope that all the people we talk to, if I was out and about and they said hi, we could have a drink and, and a laugh together. I'm sure that's true. But like life in general, a day also needs some fun and friendship. Barbara Sturgeon, on air from 9.30 till midday. Morning, crew. Morning. Good morning and welcome. It's day four of National Literacy Week. We hear about the importance of a mobile library service. We'll be giving away another book today, so listen out for the competition. Also, we hear how the Eleanor Nurses Home Care Service has changed the life of a family with a sick child. The British Red Cross is about to announce its winner of the Caring Crisis Award. Jonathan's out and about. Laura and Jamie, as you hear, are ready to go. Lots coming your way between now and 12. I think it's important to enjoy what you're doing and uh, whilst some of the things we do are serious, there is room within the show to have a little bit of fun, to have a laugh. And I think if we're enjoying it, hopefully our listeners will too. Having said that, I don't think you can force it. You know, if you come on and you say, today we're going to be funny and try to write things and try to be funny, for me that doesn't work. It should be spontaneous. And because we're friends, because we get on well, then it's not difficult. And there's the, the gentle teasing, and I think you only do that with people you like. Hang on a minute. You, if you could just look that up for Excuse us, please, me. Barbara. <laughs> you are, listen, I'm sorry. Listen. The risk of people phoning in and telling me of you, boy, are cruising for a bruising yeah, this yeah, morning. You're going to be in big because trouble. You are Getting big close to you is an important aspect of the show. And as a result, our radio car and a reporter is out and about Mondays to Thursdays, with the whole show taken out on a Friday. We have a major job being county-wide. We have a huge area to cover. And I think our radio car being out every day, as it is, is one way of letting people know that we're here. And I think it's important because it brings parts of Kent to people wherever they happen to be listening. And because it is a big county, this is one way that people can enjoy those little hidden treasures and those people in their communities without ever leaving their radio. Meanwhile, upstairs in the production office, a unique man prepares for his midday show. <laughs> Experts on almost every subject, quizzes to make your mind boggle, and comedy clips that make your sides split. 
all go together to make the Pat Marsh show. <laughs> Preparation for the show is done uh, before the programme starts, after the programme finishes for the following day, and even as the programme is going on from time to time. But it's only Claire, Minter and myself at the moment who work on the show, so it's really down to us to uh, book the guests, uh, organise the competitions, book any studios that need to be booked, do all the twiddly bits that go into the programme and prepare uh, just about everything. But that's part of the challenge because, you know, people think it's a, a two-and-a-half-hour doddle. In fact, it's a nine-to-five job. Meantime, over to Mission Control, where Claire Minter is bristling for six of the best. I am. <laughs> if you ask me. I have bristles. I shaved this morning. Thank you. People often say, why do you like presenting a programme such as this? And I think I like the, the creative part, the idea of painting a picture in somebody else's mind. Um, I like the idea of being a bit of light relief, a bit of company for those listening in the car or on their own at home. I like the idea of uh, just brightening up a, a day a little, just a smile. That's all we ask for. We don't ask for much, just somebody once in a while to, to smile at what we do on this show. Afternoons are a time to sit back, relax, have a cup of tea and join Joe Byrne. I like my afternoons. A lot of people are available in the afternoon to sit and chat. People are nice and relaxed. They've usually had a nice big lunch and they're looking forward to their evening if they're at work. And so I think it's a really good time of day. Hello and welcome back to the studio after our day out at the festival yesterday. We begin... BBC Radio Kent's newsroom not only provides bulletins on the hour throughout the day, but with our drive time programme, Kent Tonight, we're able to look closer at the stories that have been making the headlines throughout the day. Rob Smith and Colin Johnson from 5 till 7. The headlines, industry watchdogs say water bills must be cut. The companies say they can't afford it. The most radical We have to reflect local news. People want national news, they'll tune to one of the national table. networks. They want local news, they want local travel. They will come to us for both of those, which is why, except in exceptional circumstances, we will always kick off with a good, a good strong local story. We do our best to actually make sure the programme is as locally identified as it can be. We try and actually get out to, to the stories where they're happening. Our evening programme lineup continues with the evening shift. Three degrees and a woman in love. It's uh, eight minutes past seven. This is the BBC across the south of England. The evening shift with Dominic Busby. Welcome along to the show tonight. Followed by the late shift with Richard Williams. Welcome along to the late shift then. Richard Williams with you through until one o'clock. But of course, weekdays aren't the only time BBC Radio Kent keeps you company. Weekends include Saturday sport. Now Gillingham do better against the good sides and often lose against the weaker sides. Tony's well aware of that. What do you think? Well, what do you call a good... The request show with Paul James. And a very good morning. When you need a little extra cheer we got all the songs you like to hear Family requests on Sunday All together. Paul James it is indeed PJ here for another three hours of... And the very popular Sunday Gardening with Andy Garland and BBC Radio Kent's resident gardener, Doug Goodyear. Oh, naughty slap <laughs> legs, yeah, Lucy. Yes, what's it want? Uh, it wants potash. Gardening is really popular at the moment because I think it's the new rock and roll. The people who were brought up with rock and roll music in the 50s and the 1960s, they're looking for something else to do. The jiving days perhaps are over and now they do their jiving in the back garden. That's why I think it's really popular. Plus, with outside broadcasts like our big red bus, the Shepway Air Show and Sunday cricket commentary, BBC Radio Kent is truly able to reflect life in the county. Meanwhile, back in the production office, another day draws to a close. Did you manage to get the Mason studio for the guests for tomorrow morning's breakfast show? Every day of every year, your local radio station paints a picture of life in Kent. One county, one station, BBC Radio Kent.